Hello, my name is Lisa. I teach political philosophy and economic ethics in Groningen in the Netherlands. And in this short video, I want to say a few words about my new paper, Urban Rural Justice. Now, this is not a paper about principles of justice, but about a field of application that philosophy, for reasons that I can only speculate about in a certain way, has neglected, even though in many fields of the social sciences, and also in public discourse, it has been recognized as a big new dividing line in many countries. And I'm focusing on Western democracies because that's the countries I know best. Um, and the topic is the growing divide between rural and urban realities, ways of life, opportunities, and so on. Um, in political science, there has been a lot of attention to this topic because right-wing populism often draws on an image of the authentic, rural, the true citizen of that nation that you're talking about. And there is growing resentment among rural populations against the city folks. And on the other hand, city folks often seem to have pretty stereotyped uh, views of those country people and that's a problem because in the end we are all citizens of democratic societies and we need to find ways of living and governing even together. So in this paper I basically uh, gave myself some time to read up on the social scientific literature as I said, mostly focusing on Western democracies. There's a lot of interesting sociological work on the growing divide between urban and rural livelihoods. But I should also add that, of course, every rural community and every urban community is also special. So it's not trivial to find a level of generalization um, that on the one hand acknowledges all the differences and on the other still allows us to say some general things about the perspective of justice that we might want to take on this area. Now, I fully acknowledge that many questions of justice that apply to individuals and communities that live in more urban and more rural circumstances are reducible to issues of equality of opportunity, distributive justice in general, but I try to look at this topic from the perspective of relational egalitarianism, so really focusing on what does it mean for citizens to relate to each other as equals. And if you do that, and you take the empirical research on differences between urban and rural communities uh, into account, you arrive at at least three areas. One is uh, educational justice, because many kids from rural areas really don't get the same kind of support as kids in, well, at least the more privileged uh, urban areas. And the difference is, even if you're in a disadvantaged urban area, you can still have some chances to join schools and universities and other institutions of education in the more privileged parts of urban areas without necessarily having to completely live, leave your life behind. Whereas that's what it's like for many kids from rural areas, if they want to do internships, if they want to access higher education, they often have to leave. And what's interesting with regard to the US, as I learned by reading uh, empirical literature, is that apparently many local communities then pick out those promising kids that are prepared for leaving but if those kids happen to actually want to stay, that's not really an option for them because they have to access these opportunities elsewhere. Whereas the kids who are maybe not seen as so promising or who are from socioeconomic backgrounds where this is not supposed by people, let's say, for them, the assumption is that they, they have to stay. Um, and they are also not getting real opportunities to then maybe develop their talents and find different opportunities in these rural areas. So that's one area, education. And here it's very clear that kids have done nothing to somehow deserve these differences in 
conditions because they have not chosen where they have been born and into what families, into what regions. Now, the second area I look at is different in that respect. When you talk about grown-up people, you might have some kind of luck egalitarian intuition saying, well, if someone chooses to live in the, to live in the countryside, can they complain that they have to drive a bit further to certain things. Now, as I said, my general framework is relational egalitarian. And I think relational egalitarianism can sometimes accommodate differences based on choice, but only if the choice conditions have been fair, the set of choices has been fair, and you're not forcing people to choose between really valuable sets of goods in a way that means that some, and not others, have to give up things that are really um, important for their lives. Arguably, in some rural areas, that is the case, because people have to choose between living in the community that they know, where their friends and family are, where they are rooted, and lots of other things, even basic stuff such as decent access to healthcare. And that is something that democracies should not force them to do. And, but they should find ways to, to deal with this. And of course, that, that is a challenge that costs money. And from what I saw in the literature, there are still no fail-proof ways of creating jobs in rural areas. So this is a complicated task, but it's one that democratic societies have to address. The last, the third area that I look into is recognition. And... With that, I have in mind these mutual prejudices that you often have between urban and rural folks. And I mean, starting in ancient Greek uh, city-states, the prejudices were usually against the country folks um, as being backwards and a bit slow and traditional and not wanting to move with the times and so on, even though country folks can, of course, also have all kinds of <laughs> negative stereotypes about people living in cities. Um, but what we want as democracies is actually mutual recognition of choices that have been made to live certain kinds of lives. And you can actually look at this as another facet of what it means to live in multicultural societies. We don't usually categorize this under multiculturalism because historically multiculturalism has mostly looked at migrant communities coming into countries and rural areas tend to be the ones that think, okay, we are the original lifestyle of that country. Um, but given that different communities now have such different lifestyles, I think it makes sense to also include the differences between different urban and different rural communities under a broader account of multiculturalism and the need for cultural respect and the need for accommodation between different cultural communities, but also the need to create opportunities for people to get to know each other, to see the individuals behind the stereotypes and to understand that, you know, in the end, maybe we're not so different. So, that's what the paper does. It's categorized as a survey article, and I was very happy when the editor suggested this because that's really what it's trying to do. It's trying to say, look, dear philosophy colleagues, here is an area of um, injustice, really, that we need to look at. And we shouldn't leave it to the right-wing populists to pick up the sense of injustice that exists in many um, uh, rural communities because they are really disadvantaged. And you can separate this from all nationalist or xenophobic or whatever sentiments and really ask the question, what does a democratic society owe its citizens, no matter whether they live in a rural or in an urban area? Thank you very much for listening and maybe you want to read the paper and think more about this. I'd be happy to get any feedback. Thank you very much.